Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Kid, where we review, repair, and talk about retro tech. Today, we're going to be fixing this Nakamichi 600. Let's get into it. So guys, this video is probably just going to focus on mostly just the repair because I focused on the history and how I got this deck in my previous video, which I'll link in the corner up above and in the description. But just as a quick overview, I bought this deck with the original box for $160. I think that was a great deal. And um, I've had it for a year and a half now. So now that that's out of the way, let's fix it. So, with this deck, I'm going to take the dust cover off here, but anyways, with this deck, it has a few little problems. So, the first problem is this pause button doesn't work. Like, even if you press play, the pause button just won't work. Now, it does play, but it's a little inconsistent. Sometimes, uh, the pin roller will uh, get, like, a little sticky and the tape will end up, uh, it'll eat the tape. And that hasn't happened to me in a while, but just to be safe, I'll make sure to clean everything. I'm pretty sure you just need to undo screws on the bottom and then the few screws on the back just to get this back plate off. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay guys, so now that you're in this camera angle, um, we have, you can see the back of the deck. So I think there's three screws on the bottom and then these two screws on the back that we need to undo to take off this black area. And that will give us access, basic access to pretty much everything inside here. So let's start unscrewing these. I'm using my iFixit screwdriver. It has all the red bits for pretty much everything. And I'll link it in the description. I'm not sponsored by them. That would be cool if I was though. <laughs> but yeah, it's super handy. So if you're repairing anything. And the toolkit I have, it has a bunch of like nice tools other than this um, screwdriver. So I'm gonna put these screws to the side. And let's get the other one. And after we get these on the back here, we can start doing the ones in the bottom. Oopsies. So it looks like these have little, like, hold on, little metal washers too on them. So that's pretty interesting. These are super thick. All right, so now that we have those off, we can flip this thing over not to bang it on anything and we can get these screws on the bottom looks like these also have similar washers yep here's that washer again it's uh, very interesting it looks like these are the same exact screws as the one on the back as well they seem like the same length so I'm not gonna bother sorting those just put them all in one pile I guess that one doesn't have a washer, so that top middle one does not have a washer, which is pretty interesting. So let's get this bottom one here. Oops. And here's that bottom one. So they should just lift off. There we go. Wow. Okay, so I'll put that, put that back there. Let's try not to drop it. <laughs> so here you can see the cassette deck mechanism is here. It looks all very dusty, so we'll be sure to clean this. Uh, let's see, here are the little potentiometer adjustments that are on the front. You can see over here, they just connected the super long tubes that go to the circuit board with the actual potentiometers. And it looks like here is our drive belt. So feels okay it does look a little um little worn out though so we'll do that 
And what else is there? These are our plugs on the back. And then these are our potentiometers here for the knobs on the front. So what we really want to focus on here is, well, cleaning everything first of all, and also figuring out why the pause doesn't work. That will be my first thing. So I think to get the front face plate off, we have to undo these screws that undo the handles. I think the handles might be the only thing holding it in other than those knobs. So we have to unscrew these screws and then take off all the knobs on the front and then I think we can get it. So let me just show you the screws. So it's these here and then the same ones, but on the other side. So I'm gonna do that and show you guys when I do that. Okay, so now that I have all four of the screws off, we can lift it up and the handle should be right there. So there are the handles, so we can flip this over now. Oh yeah, the faceplate's already coming off, so flip it over. Be careful not to set it down on any of the handles. Just get it back here. There, so here are the handles. They're nice and handily. Very solid metal too. They're very nice. So now we can take off all the knobs on the front. Um, I'll bring you guys around so that you can see them. So here's the knobs, you can pop right off. Some of the knobs are a lot harder to take off than others, but they'll come off. This one's really, uh, really on there. There we go. So now this faceplate should just come off. There we go. And you can see these little uh, cover things just stay with the faceplate all the time. So here they are. We can put this faceplate aside too. Okay, so now that we have access to the front of this unit, I saw these uh, labels and that's really interesting how they labeled the, um, the inside, what all the buttons do and all the uh, adjustments do even though, of course, you would have the faceplate on here most of the time. So I don't know why they would label that, but it's kind of interesting. We can also see here how, um, how this is made out of super nice looking and feeling metal. So Nakamichi, super high quality. So guys, I think another common problem with uh, these Nakamichi 600s is these uh, pinch rollers down here. I don't know if you can see them well. Yeah, you can kind of see the edge of them right there here and here there's actually uh rubber wheels there and i've seen um similar to actually my nakamichi rx202 where pinch rollers can get worn out and then they'll just stop gripping and then they won't play but these pinch rollers seem to or these uh these little idler tires that's what i meant to say the idler tires look okay so i'm just gonna leave them because that seems like a very uh, long process of taking this off then if they ever do end up failing then of course i'll replace them so anyways, speaking of this pause here, I have, I still can't figure out what's happening to it. Like why it won't, why it won't go down all the way. Yeah, it's still very much, um, yeah, I've hit a block, literally. So I just watched a quick video about repairing this and I'll link it in the description. Uh, I can't remember the YouTuber's name, but He's been very helpful throughout this process. And I think we can unscrew these screws and then get, we can just pull this whole like thing, the whole mechanism out. So I'm gonna try that. These are on super tight. Don't want to strip it. Ooh, yeah. He's a big screwdriver. Hey. That's annoying. <laughs> I have an even bigger screwdriver now. Let's try this again. There we go. Now, I'm not sure if just these two screws will let us lift this drive out. Or not drive, sorry. Let lift the uh, mechanism out, but I guess it's worth a try so that we can get better access to whatever is blocking that pause button. need an even bigger one. Okay guys, so I got that screw out with these uh, pliers here because it was very stripped. And yeah, now I think we can just lift this whole mechanism out. Yeah. Seems like there's a few wires there. We got it on the back. 
see. So I don't want to force anything. Okay. I dropped the screwdriver again. Looks like there's a little twisty tie holding away. That screwdriver really went places. But it looks like, uh, let's see, so, what is stopping it from coming out? I think it's just these wires here, but. Yeah, we can kind of rest that right there, I think. And then figure out in here, so you can see if you come around the back here. Get a much better angle of that stuff. So, yeah, I'll pop this out. So it looks like down there there's a little plug. So I think if we unplug that, then we can take this, we can swing it out this way. There, we got that plug out. So now if we put this back down. Oh yeah, there's another plug over here. Oh, there we go, this whole mechanism just lifts out. So I can put that right here and we can move this whole, uh, whole rest of the deck aside. Okay, so now that we have this whole unit here out, super cool how it's just uh, modular like this, but you can see it just plugs in with these two plugs. And here's the belt, I already took it off this wheel here but it should be easy to replace. So I'll just put this down here, actually. I should probably get stuff for this to rest on because I don't want it resting on any of these buttons. Okay, so I have these uh, little blocks here. I think this should do, so yeah. Let's try to just flip this over. It's probably rested on here. Seems to work. We can even get a second one and put it there too. Again, I don't want to uh, break anything here, so. There we go. That seems good. I'll bring you guys over here now so you can see these belts. So you can see belt is right here and I don't know if I have the right size belt let me uh here's my belt bag here I think the belts I have might be too thick so let's just get any belt here you can see this one is like a few it's a little bit thinner the one that's on the deck right now so I don't know if I can replace this one with what I have. So I guess we'll just put this back on the track for now and it does work fine. And maybe in the future I will get the right one for this. But for now, oops, sorry. <laughs> Knock the camera over. For now, I think I can just keep this belt the way it is. So let's get this back on the track. And before you take any belts off of anything, this is just the general rule, you should uh, make sure you know the route of the belt first. Just so that putting it back on easier so now you can see it's spinning fine again so now I guess we can just figure out that pause button so there you go so 
here's the pause again. Again, like I said before, it just seems to be hitting a wall. So looks like it's supposed to move this right here, this little thing. So that seems to be what's stuck. So by the looks of it, it's supposed to press on this, and then this is supposed to move. Oh, okay. So it could be like a spring that's, that's messed up. So here, I think that's play. No. Oh, no, sorry, that's record. I mixed it up again. So this is, this is play here. So here's where it's hitting. No idea what that could be. If we flip it over. That's so weird. But now that we have this open, we can clean all this stuff. So I think we can get a Q-tip and just uh, get that all cleaned up. So now we can flip it over. And finally figure out what is wrong with this pause button. I've been uh, yeah, I've been wondering for so long, and here it is. This, I just can't figure out what it's hitting. Like, something is hitting something. So if we press play again, Yeah, this ejects everything, so, but it moves. Oh, there's a better angle. So what is it actually? Looks like there's a thing back there, like a metal, or this right here. So that looks very stuck. Yeah, that looks like it's supposed to move. So if I get these, don't want to break anything, so I'm just being gentle, but. So by the looks of it, this little piece right here should move up, but it, like, it seems like it's completely seized or something's blocking it. Because, yeah, that, that hooks up to everything. So, this should be the pause button, I'm almost certain. Because that's, that's what it's hitting. That's so interesting. I'm going to see if I can get that freed up. Okay, so I got it to move. If I really press the pause button down, you can see it goes, but it doesn't spring back. You can see, and you have to move it back manually. So maybe there's like a spring or something that got detached. It looks like it's controlled by this spring here, right here. So maybe that spring just got old. Hmm. Huh. Very interesting. Yeah, because there you can see it doesn't... It does, but it doesn't go all the way. You can see it's supposed to pull it all the way back. Actually, you guys can't see that, so there. So you see this right here. 
When I press pause, you can see it goes up. If I really click the pause in, hold on. If I really click it in, you can see the pause clicks down and that moves up. So that pauses it. And then if I click the pause again, it should disengage. And you can see it does go all the way down, but it should come all the way down there, you see? And then that fully disengages the pause. So I think it's just down to this spring here. Yeah. Or maybe it just, maybe it's slow. Yeah, that's, uh, so we definitely freed that up. So we can put it back in the deck now and see if that um, that does anything. Yeah, I'm gonna put this whole this whole assembly back into the deck, plug everything in, and we can check if that actually does anything. So I'm gonna show you guys those plugs that I was talking about. So over here you can see one plug. Sorry, hold on. There you go. So there's one plug. If I just uh, wiggle this around, you can see this part. Oh, no, my hand's in the way. Yeah, let me get some here. So, see this part right here, this little yellow board actually connects to the deck and it plugs into this white right here. So, if I can just wiggle this around, get it up here, that would be great. Don't want to force anything again. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Also, when you're uh, doing this, make sure it plugs in the same way around because I don't know what would happen if you plugged it in the wrong way around, but it might short circuit something. So, oh yeah, so now that that's seated correctly, looks like we can just slot this in. I'm having a lot of trouble getting this in the right position though. Okay, so now that you guys are at a better angle again, there, so you can see it just slots in like that. And then we can get this other white plug over here because this whole mechanism again, like I said before, is just plugged in by two plugs and that's it. So, I can just uh, find plug here, sorry, there you go. That's a better camera angle. But yeah, you can see we can position this just right. Then we can flip the deck back here. And then you can see here's our plug and then it plugs into this board down here. Okay guys, so you can see now that I have everything kind of put back together, I just don't have these screws in, but I have everything plugged in. So we can turn the deck on, this fires right up. Eject, let me get a tape here. There's tape. So we can put in side B. That aligns good. This play you can see. It does make a bit of a noise, but I think we can figure that out. It is reading on the VU meters, which is good. And now we can try the pause button. So that doesn't sound good. And you can see it slowly goes back and then, as you can see, but now, now it makes a weird noise. So now we have to figure out what that noise is. Is it? Could just be the tape, hold on. Maybe because this isn't positioned right, so I'll hold it in the right position. Ooh, that's not all right. Yeah, so now that it's in the right position, it's probably just rubbing up against something. So put a tape back in. There, so now it's playing quietly. You can see the VU meters are going. So if I press pause, Makes a weird noise for a little bit. 
then I think that's just the motor running without the um without anything being engaged. So you can see that slowly springs back and then as soon as it gets traction, tape spins the life again. So I'd say that works. I think that spring could use some replacing, but I don't have the replacement spring on hand right now. So I think um as long as we get that thing unjammed, then this pause should work. It just uh, takes a second. It's a slow pause. Or a, uh, a r relaxed pause. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see how slowly that goes back sometimes. Yeah, that didn't even engage that time. Unpause, come on, come on. There. Yeah, what's up with that? Oh. <laughs> there it is. I think it, it it could just be a matter of getting it like uh, all all worn in and stuff because I did just clean everything. Pause it again. There, so yeah, that's getting more consistent. So I think the more you pause it, the more that system gets some, uh, you know, gets some use, I think, then the more it'll, the more it'll like act better. So you can see it's already getting quicker. So we can assemble everything again. So I don't know if you just saw in that time lapse, but I just dropped a screw into the mechanism. So of course the screw will um, need to be taken out. So let's figure out where I dropped that screw. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you see it? Maybe it fell out the other side. Nope. Oh, it's in there somewhere. Dang it. Just when things were getting better. So, uh, I guess we can take everything out again. Or... Dang it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna take everything out again and shake it around. All right, so I got the screw finally. Didn't take long, but let's uh, let's get everything in here now. But I guess uh, dropping screws is just part of the. Uh, process and it'll happen and when it does happen you just have to deal with it so that happens to me pretty much every time I fix something I always drop a screw either on the ground but yeah either on the ground or like inside inside is where it's annoying but where aren't these screw holes aligned right unless Oh, yeah, there we go. Why wasn't that sitting right? That was weird. Tighten all these little screws up. All right, so let's put three screws back there. Now, test everything, make sure. Again, now that everything is really in there, we can make sure Everything works while it's latched in. Like, for all we know, the pause doesn't work now. So, yeah, that's much better sounding now. So, pause, unpause. Wow, perfect. Okay, so pause works, and as you can see, it's picking up everything. We can get the faceplate back on.
So here it is. This newly repaired Nakamichi 600 two-head cassette console. And to go with it, I picked up this uh, period correct uh, pre-recorded cassette tape from 1976. It's a uh, Hall of Notes cassette. And it has a super cool uh, paper, yeah, like a paper case rather than a plastic case. Another thing to note about it, first of all, is a super cool RCA logo. And it also has like no lead-in tape. So there's no little blue or pink or red thing in there. It's just all the magnetic tape and that's it. So I thought I would put it in here and it would look super cool. So let's do that. As you can see, it's popped it open, press play. And the problem I was having with this deck, like you guys just saw, was the pause that doesn't work and I just fixed that. So as you can see, it pauses just fine. And then as soon as I unpause it, and then it starts playing again. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you need to do. For the Retro Kid, I'm the Retro Kid. See you later.